really the really neat thing for me that I hadn't, you know, I'd, I'd been in the club, but I, I hadn't experienced that solidarity with the greater um, pro-life movement. And when, uh, you know, during the march, you have know, all this joy and exuberance and uh, just so many people uh, that you can't like, you can't see anything. There's so many people. <laughs> it's it's really amazing, and it's it, it, the march is often cast as being like anti-abortion, but what I saw, I didn't see like 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 most protests you think of where it's a lot of uh, like negative uh, energy. It was just a really positive, uplifting spirit um, among the marchers, cool. and that really struck me. Reed, you've been for a couple of years like the president of the SLU uh, Men for Life, and what does this march, what does this trip, pilgrimage we call it, like what does it mean, do you think, for our community here at school? Like what is the purpose of this pilgrimage? Yeah, I think a lot along the lines of what you were saying, Noah, how it sort of connects us to this larger network, and uh, one of my favorite moments from the march is when we're uh, when we're up going up Capitol Hill and you turn around and see the the huge uh, waves of people behind you and knowing that there are so many people um, for me I think it's um, a lot about um, also building that community within the um, between the students uh, that go and over the four years it's sort of been different experiences uh, of, um, looking up to the seniors who went my freshman year and sophomore year and now sort of stepping into that role of sort of setting the example what is this what does this movement mean as a man that's a really good question i mean we have a, a name for our club that's our official name men for life and this is a big event in our in our in our journey together as men for life exploring what it means to be a man uh, what do you think that means? And is there any way that this trip factors into that for you? So I think, so uh, let me, on that question, let me go to uh, the Cardinal O'Connor Conference that we went to uh, at Georgetown University. It's basically this conference that they set up at Georgetown where you have all these different speakers bringing their own, um, uh, like these pro-life speakers who have their own perspective on pro-life issue, their own portion of the issue that they're talking about, sort of. And this one talk I went to was on um, pro-life feminism. It was called Feminization of Poverty. And I was not really, um, I, I was kind of apprehensive going into it. I didn't know exactly what to expect because I had never been exposed to pro-life feminism before. Um, and when I went in, and the talk started uh, getting going. The, the woman who was giving the talk, she, first of all, she was a, a incredibly passionate about what she was speaking about. Um, and I had never experienced uh, this form of feminism that, first of all, is really pro-life. I didn't know the history of feminism, how it, if you go back to the first wave feminists like uh, you know, Susan D. Anthony, and those types of folks, uh, they were pretty much all pro-life. And it didn't, it was, uh, she pointed to a specific um, like conference at, near the start of like second wave feminism where a minority in the conference sort of was able to break off from the movement and that, you know, split mm -hmm. the, the movement between pro-life and pro-choice. And one thing that she talked about, a person in, the audience asked, you know, what is men's role in uh, in the process of a pregnancy and in, in a, a relationship with a woman? How can men be of help? And the first thing she said was, men are um, men are incredibly important in this process. They have rights and responsibilities in a pregnancy and in a relationship and True feminism uh, loves and respects men and their role, and men 
have to know that they have a responsibility to be there for uh, a woman uh, who is, is going, who's going through a, an unplanned pregnancy. And that's the most important thing, just being there for the person and being present. Um, and what I took away from that is, you know, that's uh, sometimes you get hit with the question, well, why does it have to be men for life? You know, is that sort of, uh, ex is that being exclusive or not, mm -hmm. not inclusive enough? And I, I think that it's really important that we're men for life. The, because we're trying to emphasize that the responsibility that men have in this in in this question of uh, of, uh, of of pregnancy, you know, we are an all male school, and almost none of us are of voting age, and most of us are not involved in the sectors of our culture where the reality of abortion is the reality that someone's living. Right? These are for a lot of us, not all of us, but pretty abstract issues, and so we have a club that's dedicated to many life issues, and abortion being an important one of them. Um, but is, what do we bring, right? What, what can we bring uh, as just a bunch of guys at an all-boys school like, to, this, um, to this cause or this mission? And uh, is the march, as you understand it, any piece of that for you? Definitely. Uh, so I think, like, no, you were saying that the men for life, um, the men part of that is really overarching and all the different issues, um, topics that we talk about. And I think a big thing um, that men bring to that is uh, compassion and uh, thinking about the issues. Um, because we may not have a stake in it directly, but we, we certainly do um, indirectly, um, many times directly as well. Um, and uh, on the march, I mean, it's, it's really empowering to see um, so many um, women standing up for um, what they believe from their personal testimony, their experience, um, that as a man you can't, you can't have that. Um, but being able to um, listen to their story, listen to what they've experienced um, really uh, is partially what our role is in uh, this and certainly what the march is partially about to, um, to understand and to bring you know, these 50 um, young men from SLU uh, to experience something way different from what we're used to. No, you mentioned that often in the, the media this will be built. I mean, it is the anniversary of the Roe versus Wade decision that provides the occasion for the March for Life, and it's in its 40-something year. Um, and it's often built as a as an anti-abortion rally in March. And that's that. When I see that in the news, it, it just it catches me off guard every time, even though I know because it's not kind of how I understand myself as the moderator or as a man. I suppose there's some truth to it. Do you, I guess I'm asking you because you brought it up earlier, but when you're out there, for you, does that capture what you're doing, going on an anti-abortion journey uh, to take a stand on a particular issue, or is there, is there something else at stake for you? Does it capture what's happening around you in the, in the crowd? Well, no. Um, I, it's, there's obviously, you know, the component of it that you're, you, you don't, you want to have Roe v. Wade overturned, but that's not the overarching sentiment that's being expressed. The, uh, a lot of it is it's very prayerful in the, in the midst of the crowd. A lot of people are, it's, it's a lot of prayer going on. It's a lot of pos positivity, a, a lot of singing. Like that's what uh, we were doing and that was a great, great moment of solidarity, especially when other people in the crowd um, join in on that. It's, it's pretty cool, but the no, I, I don't think it's necessarily marching against something for me, anyways. I there's there's a 
you know, there's a religious, spiritual aspect to it, and there's also, you know, I, I want to, I, I want our country to be able to live up to the ideals that we laid out in our founding documents, um, uh, like in the Declaration of Independence. Um, and an experience that I had with that at the march that was pretty cool was we went to Arlington National Cemetery and uh, we went to the uh, JFK's tomb. And, you know, first looking at it, you know, there was the eternal flame and that was, that was cool. And then I turned around and on these, these stones, they, they had the words of uh, JFK's Ask Not What Your Country you Can Do For You speech. And that, you know, those are the, the famous words of the speech, but, but I, I read the whole thing, that they, the portion of it that they had on the stones. And, um, that there were some lines that really stuck out to me and were were powerful to me. One thing was like we're we're here to do God's work, and we're this country is is going. Let all our enemies and our friends know that this country is going to stand for will always stand for liberty and fight for liberty if necessary, and our values. Um, and I just. I thought of people in my family who have served, like in Vietnam, for example, and have were were scarred for life because of that. And I I just I, I want their sacrifice to, to to mean something. And the way that it can mean something is for us in this movement to um, to, to try to live in a way that promotes the ideals that are laid out in our family that we're trying to strive for. And I think that's really what this movement is about. Now, uh, you guys are just two of the many people that went on the trip with us. Uh, what we kind of had to deal with and is this thing that's new in my life is the latest social media platform that you guys are using and trying to think about as your moderator how I can still be somewhat in control of what's happening and because it's one thing that I can have you all in one place but I can't control what's happening online and I know that um, a lot of times during the march people were posting photos of them going about the the march and then having to deal with some of the fallout right um, and I don't know if you had to deal with that personally but certainly it's something we've been talking about as a club is that um, how do we how do we navigate standing for a principle that's important to us, but also loving and respecting and really honoring um, the thinking that people are doing who disagree with us, right? Who often find maybe what we're doing downright threatening, right? Um, we try really hard to be mindful of that and not to just demonize others. Um, how, how have you been navigating that or guiding a, somebody in the club or a friend in doing that? or? having a conversation with somebody who was pretty upset with you, you know? Have you had to deal with any of that? A little bit, yes. Um, and I think that it's, it's the whole movement is based on a very positive message, I think, and that's about uh, love of life. And so the, the social media is definitely an important factor. It's a great um, messaging tool. and there were a lot of conversations going on about uh, Instagram posts people had and those replies. Um, but one of the, I think, the most uh, impactful um, quotes from the weekend was during one of our small group reflections that, that we do every night after, sort of recapping our day, uh, sort of like an exam on the day. Um, and one of our trip leaders, Mr. Lally, uh, said, um, you can, you can only change, convince someone of something if they know that you love them, um, and I think that sort of, sort of captures um, how we hope to deal with uh, and talk with people who have differing opinions who are struggling on the issues, um, and hopefully, to some capacity, we're all struggling with the issues and. Um, how we think about them, uh, but 
knowing that it comes from that love of life and uh, that foundation of loving the other person, realizing their shared humanity, and then we can start to talk about um, the topics that we're, we're passionate about. And I'm just wondering, as a Jesuit school when we come, if there's anything in particular that we bring that's unique to the March for Life, um, or maybe just in the way that you have learned to approach these issues in general, uh, can you speak, it's an ambitious question, but could you speak at all to your Jesuit education and what difference it's made for you on this issue? Well, sure, I think that um, the, the, something Ignatius talked about was being contemplative in action. And so being a man of thought and intellect, but also being a man who's able to act in the world. Get his feet on the road. Yeah, and I think that the march is a really great um, platform to be able to carry that mission out. Because, you know, in, in one sense, you know, we're marching. We're showing our advocacy through actions. But we're also doing things like the Cardinal O'Connor Conference and trying to build our intellects um, to be able to educate ourselves on the issues. So you get those two dynamics there, which are big in Jesuit education, and I think our club has always tried to emphasize that. So I think uh, a big a big thing is finding God in all things, uh, and uh, incorporating God into every part um, of what we do, and um, it's a habit, it's a skill. Um, and that's something that we can work on through the spiritual exercises. Um, right now I'm in a class uh, here, Spirituality and Prayer with Father Hill, and it's helping me, I think, to be more um, contemplative, I guess, um, throughout my day. Um, and finding God in those moments. Um, well, I had to start at the course while we were on the march. Uh, I've been working on it for the past, I guess, three years, three and a half years. So um, it's it's a process. And uh, finding God in all things, especially on the march, um, it's, it's easier to find God on the march, uh, but incorporating that into everything else that we do uh, as well. For me, you know, one of the ways that I introduced everybody to the march is welcome to one of the greatest of the American tensions in the moment. We're going to walk into the collision between kind of two two liberties or two rights, the right to life, which is enshrined in our early documents, and also in from our Constitution, as the Supreme Court has defined it, the right to privacy or to have your own body, right? And we haven't quite reconciled as a culture how how to fix that tension. But there's God in that too, right? That where do I find God? trying to live inside the tension that is really dividing our country, right? Um, and I, I think St. Ignatius um, has been challenging me to stay on the walk and to stay in action in a really hard space where you really are just tempted to go to one side and dig your trench and stay there, right? And somehow we have to find ways to create bridges in our families and our cultures and I think starting with what you said earlier is really nice which is like uh, starting with love we had a great prayer this morning on the intercom about Martin Luther King Jr. inviting us all to be extremists for love you know what I mean like that's what the Christian life is, is we should be extremists for love in a world that's often filled with extremists for hate any future hopes as you graduate for the club and uh, as you kind of go into your final year into greater leadership in the club? Like, um, what are your hopes for um, our club, for the March for Life, for the community here at SLU that's working on uh, life issues from conception to natural death? Like, what are some of your dreams for the club? I think uh, we've, we've been on a really great path, and that's a lot because of... Um, just how many people we have that are so excited about it. Um, you know, we have core team meetings every week, meetings every week, um, which is pretty unusual. Um, and so there's definitely an, a, a unique energy here um, in our club. Um, and I think, I really hope that we continue to 
pursue that. Um, it's it's inspiring to see so many people um, that care about this issue take time out of their school days to do this um, and to keep pressing in future years uh, to keep pressing on the, the difficult issues. There are going to be a lot more questions that we have to factor in with um, genetics and biotechnology that are coming into play as we speak, I mean, rapidly. Um, and so, how does science work with work with faith and how do they complement each other um, is something that I think I'm really excited to see what the club can do with. And as I go up to college, I really hope to be involved in um, a pro-life, a, a men for life uh, and a woman for life, mm -hmm. depending on where I go, club. You know, I think for, for one, we're really blessed in this club to have uh, a moderator who puts in a heck of a lot of time into, uh, you know, really providing high quality um, stuff every single week. Well, you gave the lecture on natural law yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, well, I, I think that's one thing we've got to continue trying to do is continue to have a, a high quality of discussion on a consistent basis on a variety of issues, not just the abortion issue. But I think we, one of the reasons that we've been able to attract so many people to this club is that we're not afraid to tackle um, any anything that falls under the pro-life uh, banner. And we are, we, we have open and honest discussion. And if we can continue to foster that um, and be consistent with it, I think that we'll continue to have yeah. success. I'm proud that we have liberals and conservatives and Democrats and Republicans and yeah. Republicans and everything in between that feel like they have something to offer the, our conversation in, in life. And those are the bridges that we're trying to build. Hey, thank you guys for your time. Thank you. Uh, to think thank together you. about what we've been up to and our experiences together. So great. Appreciate it. Thank you.